Hello, I'm Tom Spilsbury, and I'm here with two former showrunners of Doctor Who, uh, Russell T. Davis. Hello. And Stephen Moffat. Hello. Together at last. Yes, I know. We're very excited. Yeah. You two shouldn't both be here at the same time. Well, surely. we already live together. Yeah. We've lived together for over yeah. 10 years yeah. now. Yeah. So, so it's, it's yeah. nice to be out fine. in yeah. public. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and the reason for you both being together today is because we're here to talk about your novelizations. I like calling them novels, not novelizations. Do you? Novelizations That's good, okay. small. It's a novel. <laughs> I did Rose, the very first story from 2005. And I did, uh, I call mine a travesty um, <laughs> uh, of a Day of the Doctor, three which, was, um, uh, which was the, uh, the, the, the 50th anniversary. The 90th. Kind of, 90th. Do you travel? Do you <laughs> travel there? I yeah, look forward to that. It was, it was a tough show. <laughs> <laughs> What's kind of got lost in the launch slide is, is it's all the big regen, big episodes, all the regeneration episodes. There's one yeah. for each Doctor. So if oh, I'd said, well, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, no, that's got forgotten somewhere. Mm. But it's like, so if I said I want to do a gridlock or something, they would have said, no, mm. but it's got to be a launch or a change or yeah. the 50th. It's got a strap line, these books, the, the big ones. <laughs> you can see why they didn't go with it. Yeah. <laughs> so when you sat down to write uh, the, the book in question, uh, what, how did you approach that? Did you go back to look at the original uh, TV version or, or the script? Or, or what was I'd your like first to thought? speak on Stephen's behalf. I don't think he looked at it once. <laughs> <laughs> it's a completely <laughs> new book. Yours. It's not. It's loads of it's the same. <laughs> I, although I can, I can grass you up. I, I emailed you and said, how's it going? Yes. I haven't got anyone near staff. He said, I can't find the script. <laughs> yes. Do you have it? I didn't have one. <laughs> no, no, no. And that Johnny, Mo and I looked at the script book was published. Yeah. And that's out of print. And it was about 20 quid on eBay. I thought, I'm yeah. not paying that. <laughs> so, I couldn't. And so that lovely Johnny Morris, who's a, who's a BBC novelist as well yeah. and a writer, he sent me the first draft. And didn't you send me a transcript? I, I find a transcript You found me a transcript, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So, and I always meant to watch it, and never did. I thought I'll watch it one day. I'll, you know, halfway through the book, I'll tidy it up and watch it. And I just never quite got around to that, really. I, um, I found my uh, shooting script. I found the one we actually had at the, uh, the read-through. And I hadn't realised, I had no memory of this, how much I'd rewritten it while we were making it. Oh. Because I kept thinking, this, is, this, isn't, this isn't what was on telly. And I had no written record of what we actually made. So I had to get the DVD out uh, and, and watch it and apparently ignore it. But uh, <laughs> no, I did. I, I wrote loads of it down. Did I you did. use the stuff from the script? Um, I did. I didn't ever, I didn't ever cut and paste because no. that, that, that feels like cheating, doesn't it? Mm. And so much of it doesn't. I mean, you know, I, I seen on television that goes really, really fast. It just looks utterly lame Dead, when you it? put it on the... Yes. Uh, on the and page. I actually, to, to, in terms of the cut and paste, I found that boring. Yes, And I was sitting boring. there thinking, thinking, if I find this boring, it's going to be boring yeah. to read. So you can't just... Mm. I mean, obviously, you have to have some lines in there, but it's, it's, mm. you've got to kick it a bit. Mm. So was it a harder process than you thought it might be then? Hmm. I kind of thought it'd be tricky. I allowed myself a lot of time, actually. For once, I started months before it was due, which is very rare. Do you know that can happen? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever, ever done that in your life? Um, so, I, and I was glad I did. When I got there, I was oh, this is much slower than I thought, so hooray, I got it done on time. I, um, I actually really enjoyed it. I had a, I had a whale of a time. I, I, I quite like the fact that loads of the heavy lifting is done. All the, you know, the sequence of the story, what, what's going to happen is sorted. But it's when you, do, when you bump into things, particularly, I think, on Day of the Doctor, which are not going to be all that impressive written down. Yeah, hanging Matt Smith off the TARDIS and lowering him into uh, Trafalgar Square, that's great on telly. I mean, just writing it down isn't quite the same impact. You have to find different ways of doing it. Sort of, uh, I think when you, when you write a uh, screenplay, it's the events as witnessed. And when you write a book, it's the ev events as experienced. Mm. You're sort of in the heads of the people that, uh, who are involved in it. So you sort of, it, it just works differently. I think what's amazing, if I can say it, about Day of the Doctor, it's, it's a brilliant read, is that you always say about Doctor Who that it eats up on screen, it eats up movie-sized ideas. Mm. Like The Weeping Angels could be a great big movie franchise, mm. like The Mummy or like Frankenstein's Monster. Damn. It's a great big idea <laughs> thrown away on a TV show. And I think you've done the same in prose because you've got that idea that the third person is actually the first person. And then you shift it. That's a great big, oh, that's you. bigger than Gone Girl. That, that's better than Gone Girl. It's like Tristram Shandy. It's like, and, and, I, and if you haven't read it, I'm not giving anything away there because you won't see it coming. And it's very, very clever. Well, that's, that's awfully kind of That's you. a huge idea. I've never mm. seen done in anything and should have made you a million pounds in a best-selling book and you've I've really done it again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, but it's Doctor Who, isn't it? Maybe no one will read this, so <laughs> <laughs> you can just go and do it again. Do you think that's going to happen? <laughs> Equally, it shakes. We, we, we emailed about this. We were talking about it. Um, Mickey in 
rose. It's, it's, mm. he, um, it, because we were in his head, he's such a lovely guy. Yes. yes and yes, yes, and yes. all the, the jokes about Mickey towards the end of the TV show, you're thinking, oh, no, Doctor, shut up. No, don't, don't say that. Yes. But Wilson as well, the whole story of Wilson, <laughs> which would have been a great novel had someone not resurrected Doctor Who <laughs> at the wrong moment. <laughs> so you think, I was at the middle, the beginning of a really gripping comic novel, and he got killed by a plastic man. But you know the funny, the way you remember these things is that... Uh, the prologue is all about Wilson, the caretaker yeah. of the shop that gets blown up. And these books then get sent to Cardiff, to Chris Chippel and his team, just to, because they're the publishers now. Yeah. They're the, so, And I got a note back saying, which is lovely, really lovely, from one of their script people sort of saying, oh, that's great, you know, we do notice that uh, Wilson was the chief electrician on screen and now he's the caretaker. I had no memory of that whatsoever. So I thought he was the caretaker, didn't you? I th I I did, no, I, I, I wasn't even aware that I changed that because it's a better story if he's the caretaker now. It's just yeah. better. So somewhere in my head years ago, I did a bit of erasing, possibly always planning to write this yeah. somewhere, somehow. You know the way you do with everything yeah, yeah, you've yeah, ever written? Yeah, it all kind of yeah. ticks, you, you never yeah. finish writing them. They always tick away. So so that's weird. I didn't. I was changing stuff and I wasn't, wasn't aware I was changing them. How fascinating is this? <laughs> <laughs> so we discussed the size caretaker, of the, the electrician. Oh, no, it's just... <laughs> they were quite often in the article, so this is. <laughs> There were quite often changes in the novels for yes. um, from the TV version, you know. But, and, and but now you're realising they're happening because we don't remember the TV yes. show sufficiently well. We always thought Terence Dix had like a master plotter going, haha, yes. I saw, <laughs> we manufacture this and now you realise it's just typing at midnight. Yeah. <laughs> well, of course, both of you have also um, written two other stories which have been novelised uh, by other writers. Mm. So you're yes. having now the experience of reading your own stories back as yeah. interpreted by somebody else. How, yeah. how has that been? That was lovely. That yeah. was what Jenny Colgan did the Christmas Invasion, and uh, we emailed a bit. We, we didn't actually talk to each other much. She mm. asked a couple of questions. I can't even remember what the questions were. It's lovely. It's a great mm. compliment, and you read it and you think, "Oh, that's, that's mm. brilliant." Your name's there for no work. It's nice, mm -hmm. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Did you ask? You asked Paul. Yes, uh, because uh, they hadn't assigned someone to Twice Upon a Time, so I asked if it could be Paul. I didn't think he'd do it. I thought he would be a bit. Yeah. Uh, I thought it would be below him now. Uh, but uh, he was he was really keen, but he had a slightly murderous time because we were nowhere near finished the show. <laughs> he cut half an hour for time. Um, half an hour. Yeah, it was longer. Oh. It was longer than Dunkirk. Wow. <laughs> and I, I actually I mean the historical event, not the uh, not the movie. It was it was very long. So he, but he was very smart on which bits he thought you know that's actually quite good. But you know that bit that can that can stay on the floor. That's fine. When uh, you were, were writing your books, then did you find that that things you wanted to either cut or reinstate were sort of fairly obvious things? That Slightly. Were... It's at the very beginning on, in the script, at the very beginning when the Doctor and Rose were escaping mm. from Hendrix in the original script, they got in the lift and the lift was attacked. Mm. And Hawthorne's coming up through the floor and through the roof. Very exciting. And we cut that about two days before filming because we got a bit behind schedule. So we cut that. And I'd always thought, oh, that's a shame. What a shame. And will you write the book? Oh, yes, I'll put that back in. And you get to it. Oh, that's boring, isn't it? It's like say, <laughs> visual, visual things you know, yeah. uh, that aren't that exciting. Yeah. So much to my surprise, I didn't even bother putting that back in. I went, oh, 12. But the Hawthorne eye came back. And yes. Mickey's eye. I, I yes, there that. Are th there's a lot yeah. of plastic stuff with Mickey where there's yeah. a second Mickey and his eye pops yeah. in the soup. That was cut from the script, and that's nice to have back. And you yeah. added quite a bit to um, Day of the Doctor. Yeah, I, I mean, yes, but it was, a it was for a different reason because Day of the Doctor just goes at a million miles an hour. Uh, it means even by Doctor Who standards, it's fast. And, we, uh, and that bit, for instance, where you, you, you arrive with David and he's just in a field and he's proposing to Elizabeth I. Um, and, you, and the joke there on the television version is you never bother to explain what the hell's going on. You've popped in in the middle of a, a, a typically barmy Doctor Who episode. Look what he's up to. He's got engaged to a Zygon, possibly a horse. <laughs> you know, that is about you know, the 20-minute you know, uh, mark of a, of a Doctor Who episode. But you find when you're writing, you think, no, you can't. How did he get there? Mm. Uh, so, you, so you write the whole story, and I, I really enjoyed writing of his ridiculous romance with Elizabeth I. That's, I mean, there is so much that's new in yours. It's brilliant. It's, 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 it's like three novels in one. I love it. That's a very good review. It's a like very good review. Fun. Three <laughs> novels in one for one price. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it's, it's actually your very first novel, isn't it, Stephen? It's, uh, you've written it's unlike Russell, who has written two Doctor Who novels. Um, yeah. You know, damaged Goods, mm -hmm. I remember that. It was brilliant, Damaged Goods. It is my very, very first, my very, very first go. Uh, and I really, I, I thoroughly, I was 
incredibly happy with it up until the exact moment I read Russell's, <laughs> uh, which arrived on Monday. I read it. I thought, oh, that's how you do it. Oh, look, it's got the old, the old funny backstories, character. Oh, oh, not 17 twists a page. And I felt as well. We're not just saying we genuinely emailed each other, but I felt the same when I read Stevens because you've got Gallifrey and Daleks and timey, wimey stuff and mindset and a council estate and a shop. <laughs> it's not yeah, but it's so with such people, right? Yes, it couldn't be more different, actually. It's, no. it's, it's, it's yeah. genuinely interesting. So, <laughs> now, now you've got your, your copies of your books and indeed all the, all the ones that yes. you released mm. there. We were the two who insisted on being given all of them. Yes. Was, they said, we'll send you your book. And now. we both said, no, no, no. no you'll send all them all. Of them. <laughs> you'll send, we'll send all our books. I'll have all of them. Have you put it on the shelf with the others? I haven't yet. No, 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 no. Maybe because I've got to climb over a desk to get there. And I'm 55 now. And I fear for myself on the desk. But I will. I will. I've got all of mine are in the office, in my office where I work. See, I, haven't, I haven't done the thing of having all mine in order or anything. Mine are scattered all over the place. But uh, no, I, I haven't. But I've got, you know, I've got the, the very first ones I bought. I've got the Doctor Who and the Daleks one that I'm in the photograph reading. If you've seen the yes. photograph of me as a kid. Uh, I've got that one. Uh, which was, you know, the most read book in the world. I'm surprised that, you know, the, the, mm. the, the words haven't been worn off the page a number uh -huh. of times I read that. I've got them all, first editions, I think. I think I bought them all faithfully. Yeah. Which one was your most reread one then? If yours was the Doctor Re of the Dark. I did love that Fury from the Deep one. I thought that was. Yeah, it was brilliant. great. That Ben Aronovich one is. is uh, yes, I remember the Nazi. Terrific. That is it's a fantastic. Terrific. All right, well, let's talk about um, wh what is it then you think about the, the target books range, which is still such a, an enduring uh, part of Doctor Who's history? And well, yes, they've only, they didn't endure until now, really. <laughs> 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 so they died a death. But um, it'll be interesting to see. I'll be interested to see. I mean, we kind of know fans will read this. It's been yeah. interesting to see if these sit in these school libraries or, or get yeah, read or what, you yeah. know, whether, whether people will come. And there will be some. There always are. People always mm. discover things. Um, so, but. Of course, in the old days, they were the only record we had. But they're still beautiful. They're beautiful mm. things. They, I really have got the entire collection in a row, in transmission order, on my shelf at home. And I love, I love having that. Right where I write, right there, over a desk. But I, um, that's obviously, I'm going to go home and do that immediately. Come on, come yeah, on, come on. I, I remember the thing I most remember was I, I was so I, I'd, I stared at those covers so much mm. that I could, I could tell a new one from across the shop if yeah. I walked mm. in. I'd say, oh, that's a new arrangement of colours. Now, if you're going to uh, promote your your new books to oh. to the viewer oh, right. who's yeah, watching right. here, what's the one thing that you would uh, oh. perhaps tease for for people to look out for? That's a cheat of a question. I don't know. Um, uh, uh, the very first story with Rose, that was played by Billy Piper, who was so gorgeous and brilliant. And I think, and, I, and actually, well, part of the reason why I envied Stephen's book so much is that, is that you can get into the Doctor's head. It was actually in Rose, who d denied being inside the Doctor. He's a stranger all the way mm. through it. But nonetheless, what I am proud of it is the story of a, a young woman in London, an ordinary life being turned upside down by extraordinary and ultimately beautiful events. Beautiful despite the massacre. <laughs> <laughs> I love the massacre. the massacre. The massacre goes, goes yes. on and on. You're inventing characters just to off them. There's Lego in the massacre. Why didn't I think of Lego all those years ago? <laughs> oh, probably that's copyright that's would have been really. probably a nightmare. And but we could have used little bricks, couldn't we? And those, uh, and those statues, the living statues on the... Exactly. That, that is that brilliant. I thought of that now. There's yeah. a bit on the, on the South Bank where those frozen people yeah. who you throw money at the feet at turn out to be autons, which I didn't even think of at the time. Mm. And this time I thought, this is a bit boring. They just mm. walk into the auton base. Oh, living statues, I thought. Mm. I, I, the thing I liked writing the most was the various doctors describing each other. It's quite often yeah. uh, from the doctor's own point of view. So, so you know, what Matt Smith looks like to David Tennant, what David Tennant looks like to Matt Smith. And uh, my, my best fun of all, oddly enough, the, I thought the, uh, the, the comedy highlight for me was, uh, was writing John Hurt describing the other two doctors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a few things actually, which of course, retrospectively, you've been able to include which weren't yes. part of it before. Because I think there's a few things, obviously, um, Rose at that point has, of course, unbeknown to her, already met the Doctor, but she, without realising yeah. who he yes, was. Yes, there's a so. bit in the end of time where yeah. David Tennant stands in the shadows on New Year's Eve, so she remembers meeting a drunk late at night. <laughs> Narrow it down a bit. <laughs> How many drunks have leered after Billy Piper late at night by the bins? I It'd wonder. be lovely if she'd remembered the wrong drunk. <laughs> 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 Completely different it story. Was, it was, <laughs> <laughs> that was 2004. She did that. <laughs> and, um, and Clyde, there's a big... The sequence on television where she goes to Clive, this, this man who's researched the Doctor, and that's played by Mark Benton, 
which at the time it was right that he just, you yeah. didn't want to confuse people with lots of doctors at the time. Mm. Uh, so he's just got a history of what we now know is the ninth doctor mm. on screen. On page now, in 2018, he's got the history of all the doctors and his father was killed mm. by a Dalek in remembrance of the Daleks. Yeah. It's, it's, you can just yeah. let rip about that. Because there were a lot of fans buying this. And also everyone's a fan now. Yeah, it's funny it's how much people, because I think Harry Potter was a great lesson in this, uh, that people love backstory. Mm. You're kind of brought up to think, oh, don't have backstory. It's, it's very off-putting. Mm. Science fiction is very dense. People don't like a lot of that. Yes. Rubbish. We now live in a world where the richer the text, the denser the text, the more there is to grab hold of in it. Should people know, even if they don't know the history, the people know when the history's been got right? I don't know, you can sense yes, it. When, yes, when, when yes. we're doing uh, Day of the Doctor and Tom Baker turns up at the end, there's a five-year-old spoiler. Um, <laughs> the, uh, and, you know, every, everyone's weeping. <laughs> and Sue's weeping next to me, and I said, do you know who that is? <laughs> and she's, no. And I said, well, that's, that's Tom Baker, the fourth Doctor. Oh, which one he is? Is he John Pertwee? <laughs> no, he's Tom Baker, I just told you his name. But she knew it was Yeah, she got it. She just got mm. That's really important. Yes. I'd like to thank Russell T. Davis and Stephen Moffat for joining me today. And details on where you can buy their new books are in the box below. Have you had people, like, people on Instagram like going, where can I buy your novel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to click below to subscribe. To the official Doctor Who YouTube channel. Because we'll be very, very offended be if you do. Well, no, I think it's really no, insulting. If you actually thought as far as thinking about it and you just did, <laughs> shall we do it again?